Matt Bernie or Mike Beer taking a look at the Gallant Bloom from Belmont Park Sunday afternoon. It is race number five. It's scheduled to go off right around 3.30 or so. 3.38, I believe, is the scheduled post. I'm going to take a look at the field if we could. It's a small field, Mike. You've only got a field of six. Uh, and I think with this race, you need to start and kind of begin <laughs> with the ballerina and the horses that are exiting that race, yeah. which was arguably the most ridiculous pace situation I've ever seen in any sort of legitimate race. It's amazing. I mean, a grade one sprint at Saratoga, and um, they're riding it like they got to go around again. I mean, I mean they, nobody wanted the lead, even when By the Moon took it. I mean, nobody even decided to come after. She was absolutely walking on the lead in there. Um, it was a very strange race to watch. By the Moon obviously had all the best of it, just going to the front without uh, without that much pressure and without having to go fast. She managed to hold on at the end. Very, very strange race. But the two horses exiting that race, I thought they both ran well in the battle. I mean, they're going to be tough in here. Highway Star is one of them. Karina Mia is the other. Let's start with Highway Star. She was the one that was pressing those snail-like yeah. fractions early on. To me, it almost felt like I understand that maybe that played into her hooves, but at the mm -hmm. same time, it, it allowed a good horse and by the moon. Yeah. You were never going to go by her at that point. No. I don't want to hold it against her, but I also don't really want to upgrade her, whereas on the other side, I want to upgrade Karina Mia. Yeah, I sort of feel the same way about it, and I have no knocks on Highway Star, because if you've seen her run it all in New York, then you love her. Yeah. All she does is run every time, and she leaves it all out on the track. She's really good. Um, if I was going to, and listen, she didn't really have a big excuse in the ballerina because she was right up on yeah. the pace, but if I was going to nitpick it a little bit, I would just say Angel Arroyo, take the race to buy the moon a little bit earlier than that. I mean, he yeah. basically waited until the quarter pole to actually really start racing her, and then he just couldn't get by her in the stretch. Um, he probably should have went a little bit sooner and turned that into a real horse race, and maybe maybe he would have won then, but maybe he wouldn't have. We'll see. Um, I think you're right, though. I think if you, when you watch the replay, for me anyway, it's hard not to want Karina Mia out of that race. Considering there was no pace that day, yeah. she was coming from well off of it. At one point on the far turn, she was actually last, yeah. and she ended up making a move between horses. The problem for Karina Mia in this spot the pace scenario looks like it could be, I don't want to say similar to what we had in the ballerina, but let's take a look at the Timeform US pace projector. They've got a favoring horses yeah. on or near the early lead, and the horse that is projected to be on the lead is a new entrant in here for Todd Pletcher. That is the six Lucy and Ethel. Yeah. And boy, if that happens, isn't Karina Mia up against it again? Yeah, that's true. I mean, if let's say this. If the pace is as slow um, as the ballerina pace was, then there's something wrong. I mean, th these guys, <laughs> yeah. the, you know, some, the, the stewards need to call people in and, yeah. and ask these guys what they're doing. The other thing is, if it is that slow and Karina Mia gets the same trip she got in the ballerina, then Castellano just has no idea Gotta what go. he's doing. She has more speed yeah. than that. You know, the thing with the ballerina is, I don't know that she would have been necessarily that far away, but she got into a little bit of traffic on the backstretch and she lost position. And I don't think that was Castellano's fault. That's just the way that it fell. Um, she's faster than that, and she can be closer if she has to. And if this pace doesn't develop, he's got to put her into the race sooner. Lucy and Ethel has a race on her page that is good enough to win this race yeah. outright, I suppose. If you just want to look at the figures, that was the prior race last year at Saratoga, but keep in mind that was on an intensely speed-friendly day. Yeah. No one from the back did any sort yep. of running. And then you factor in, she goes to Keeneland, it's a disaster, and we haven't seen her since. Right. Now she shows up for Pletcher, and oddly enough, although Todd's winning everything, we've got a negative formulator fact for Todd Pletcher. When you look at horses past five years, first after the trainer switch, greater than a 180-day hmm. layoff in sprints, one for 22 with a 21-cent ROI. If she gets out there and no one goes with her, sure, she's dangerous, any yeah. horse is dangerous, yeah. but there's a part of me that I don't know how good she actually is. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I feel bad kind of looking at her PP. She's four for five, and if you can get past the Raven run, I mean, her races are good. I I don't really like any of them, and I don't know why I feel that way. I mean, she she won her second career start by the length of the stretch with an 89 buyer. I mean, it was a good performance. Then she won two graded stakes after that. I go through it and, and watch her races, and I'm just kind of like, eh, I, I guess she's all right. I don't know. I, Maybe she'll win this. Maybe she'll get to the front and beat this field. I want to see her do it. Those are the three horses I think most people are going to focus in on. But yeah. there are at least there's at least one other horse that's intriguing in here, and that's K Zone, the number four. She's an interesting one simply because her recent form maybe not all that good, but yeah. the blinkers go on trying to kind of reawaken her. Yeah. And you consider she has races in the past that are good enough to be competitive here. I mean, she really does. I mean, I guess it's all a question of whether you think she can just sort of bounce back and get back to one of her good races. Because her races from, you know, she didn't race, she doesn't race that often. That's the real problem with her. Yeah. I guess she has some issues, but her races may be right up until the end of last year. 
they would give her a pretty big chance in this race. She's run four times this year. I don't think she's run well in any one of those four. If you think she can rebound, she's a viable alternative to the favorites. Um, that's up to what you think she's going to do here. The other two runners seem like they're a bit overmatched in here. Michelle Nevin does tremendous work off the claim, but yeah. the two friend of Liberty looks slow. I mean, it, I guess they're just taking a shot here off the claim. I'm not sure why this horse is in this race. The five absolutely, absolutely I should say, yeah. is at least mildly interesting because she can be a little bit more forwardly placed, yeah. but she's another one. She's just low on paper. Yeah, she's too slow to win this race. She's a good New York bred. She's a halfway decent sprinter, and you're right, she's got a little bit of speed, but she's never been good enough to beat these horses. It's not a big field, but again, from a pace scenario, it looks like it could be a bit of a chess yeah. match. The gallant bloom. Let's take a look and see where Mike and I decided to land here for this race, race number five at Belmont Park on Sunday afternoon. Mike is going to go with Karina Mia in this spot, and yeah. I'm going to go with Highway Star. Karina Mia, though, I feel like she is the horse that you're probably supposed to take yeah. out of the Bellary. It does sort of feel that way. I like the way that she, you know, uh, her first start for Chadbury, I like the way that they cut her back there, and I like the, the way that she won that race, and I think this is what she really wants to do. I feel like I have to take her um, out of the ballerina, but I will readily admit I almost feel like she has to win this race. If they're going to go on with her and try and make it to the Breeders' Cup with her or a race like that, she better win this race. Highway star for me. She's just, Mike said it all, she just shows up and runs so each and every time. And I have to be honest, I love the fact that the one-turn races, that's just her thing. Yeah. You know, she okay, she's been terrible in those two-turn races. They know now. She's a one-turn horse, and whenever she goes out there, she tries. Maybe she's good enough, maybe she's not. I'll give her another look here, though. In the Gallant Bloom, it is scheduled to go off at 336 Eastern on Sunday afternoon at Belmont Park, race number five. Good luck.